Greetings, beloved Princeton United Methodist Church community. It's Pastor Jenny here with an update for you, and I'm reading from John chapter 15, verse 11. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. You know, Christianity is a, a religion of joy. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that we always think that. I certainly don't think we always see that in each other or even in ourselves or out in the world and the way that Christians are portrayed. But Jesus, you know, was full of joy. And, um, and so we're going to be talking about joy over the next several weeks. And we're going to be talking about it as contagious joy, that joy is never something that's just our own that is just something that's kind of quiet and still in our hearts. It can be that, but if that's all it is, I don't think the joy is complete, right? I think the joy is meant to spill over um, in that song, you know, I've got peace like a river, love like an ocean, joy like a fountain. It comes up and out and flows from us. And, um, and so, Joy, though, is is one of those things that I think we uh, need to continue. I know, at least I need to continue to um, uh, practice it, to um, explore it, to let myself feel it. I do think that joy, much like love, is a practice, less than an, uh, more so than an emotion. It's less an emotion and more a practice, a choice. But also it's something, it's called a fruit of the Spirit. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's one of those things that grows in us as we follow the way of Jesus. Now, following the way of Jesus is also challenging, right? It's not easy. It's not all bliss and happiness. It is not all just surface um, bubbles and light and laughter. It's certainly not that. And this is one of the powerful things about joy is that it's there, it can be there, it can be fostered, it can be practiced, even as things are challenging, even as things are hard, even as we um, have experiences that of, of, um, of, of, of injustice, experiences of heartache and loss and grief, it doesn't replace those things. It doesn't overshadow those things. It doesn't negate those things. Those things are all there and real and very important to feel and experience those hard things in life. But joy can um, inform those things. Joy can shape those things. Joy can even emerge from those things. Joy can be there alongside those things. Joy might even be there because of those things, which I know is a little strange sometimes to think about, but that is something that we're going to keep exploring. Last Sunday, I talked about in worship, I talked about how God says yes to us and we say yes to God. And I talked about how these yeses you know, keep coming and, and that there is this harmony that comes out of these mutual yeses, this back and forth, these yeses from God and yeses from us. And I also said that those yeses are like the drumbeat of joy, the heartbeat of joy. I think that this is so crucial for us to understand. One of the things I'm so grateful about Princeton United Methodist Church for is that is that our mission statement talks about joyfully responding to God's grace. Friends, I don't know if you know how extraordinary this is. I think that I don't I don't even know. I've asked some, but I haven't gotten the answers yet. If you know, I'd love to hear the story of how this came to be in our mission statement because I think it hits the nail on the head so beautifully. And yet it is not common to hear this as uh, a mission statement in a church or even something that is just named on a regular basis. What I mean is that we are very aware of how joy isn't always in our lives. We are aware of this. And so to, to say that our part of our purpose is to joyfully respond to God's grace can feel like pressure. It can feel like, well, that's not how it always is. So how, how does this work exactly? But I think 
our primary work as followers of, of Christ, as followers of Jesus, as people who are putting our faith in the triune God and following the way of Jesus, that our primary work is really to respond to God. It is to say yes, our yes, to God's yes. It is this, these responses of yes, yes, I'm going to trust you. Yes, I'm going to love. Yes, I'm going to learn. Yes, I'm going to let you transform me. Yes, I'm going to surrender myself to this way of life and this way of being. And uh, that includes joy, but it also comes from a joyful place, right? Oh, this joy that God has said yes to me um, is something joyful, right? It's something that produces joy in us and lets us do this. So, um, so I invite you, how do you experience joy? What does it mean to you? How do you identify it in your body or in your, your spirit, in your mind? Um, when can you name times when you can say that I was joyful <laughs> there, that was a joyful experience? Or what do you do when you are joyful? Do you have a practice that, that comes? Maybe it's very quiet and internal. Maybe it's a silent thank you or a, a, a breath or a moment or soaking it up. Maybe you journal, whatever it is. I invite you to notice how you experience joy and how you, um, how you practice it, what it comes with those experiences of joy. So on Sunday, we're going to talk more about this mission statement that we have and, and what it means to respond joyfully um, to God's grace. We're also going to celebrate communion together, which is, is in itself a joyful thing. We're continuing in this Sundays after Pentecost, and we're going to um, um, keep talking about contagious joy. It's actually Trinity Sunday. It's the day that we particularly are grateful or think about the idea that we have a triune God, one God in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And um, we'll talk about that just a bit, but that'll be included. It's included every week, but we'll talk about it a little bit more this Sunday as well. Friends, um, uh, lots of things going on in the life of our church. This is a busy time in churches and schools and families and communities, and uh, that is true for us as well. But I hope to see you on Sunday, whether it's in person or whether it is joining um, remotely via our live stream. We love to have you in whatever way you worship. And part of my hope is that, that this joy and this celebration of Pentecost and um, God's work in us can be truly contagious. Is there somebody you can invite to share in worship with you um, in one way or another, in person, online? Maybe you're not even in the same place worshiping uh, together every time, but I invite you to invite someone and let them uh, um, know the joy that you have as being for being part of Princeton United Methodist Church. Friends, it is a joy for me to be part of this community and I am grateful for you. Remember that you are enough because God is enough and know that it is truly a joy for me to be on this journey with you.